Welcome back to the channel where we all can learn and grow together. I'm inside my uh, grandfather-in-law's old garage. It has a lift in it and I have a 2001 Oldsmobile Celica and it looks like we're going to be uh, replacing a CV joint half shaft front axle however you want to call it. So this tire's got to come off and uh, I thought I was going to be able to use my tripod, but a piece that holds my camera on kind of broke. So I'm not able to use my tripod at the moment. I'm going to have to try and figure something out for that in future videos. So I'm going to try and do the best I can, but I'm going to have to have both my hands with this one. So I'll have to kind of just shoot footage as I make progress and... Uh, we'll try and uh, make a video of this anyway, so I'll see you in the next step. Stick with me. Okay, I went and got this. Uh, it's a new tool now, <laughs> but it is a 33 millimeter impact socket for taking off this wheel axle. You will need a like an impact gun or a breaker bar but if you use a breaker bar on this make sure that the vehicle is in park and also you can spray with some PV blaster or penetrating oil to get this off but on this particular vehicle it is a 33 millimeter socket that will get this off and now what I'm going to do is finish taking that off and then on this side right in here part of this control arm and bottom lower ball joint there's a castle bolt in here I don't know if I could get a good picture it's pretty dark Let's see here Let's shine this light in here but there's a castle bolt right right there with a carter pin sticking out I gotta remove that okay what I did to get this castle bolt off on the bottom ball joint is one you gotta remove the old little carter pin, usually some needle nose pliers that get that out. Then it helps if you could turn the wheel out of the way. I got it here. There's almost no room, even with the wheel straight, to go in on this side. You're gonna have to go in on this side right here. There's a castle bolt, 18 millimeter wrench to get this off. So uh, that's all I got here is an 18 millimeter and uh, it fits on there just fine. So I'll catch you in the next step. Stick with me. Okay, I'm having to take a little bit more off than what I wanted to. Basically, I'm taking the caliber and uh, the rotor and everything off. So to get the caliber off, there's two 15 millimeter bolts for here and here. Those has got to come off. The caliber will lift straight out. Uh, I like to utilize the struts here to hang the caliber up there. And then usually put uh, the brake shoes. These are still in good condition, so those will get reused. Put those on there. But I'm going to take these two 15 millimeter bolts off. The rest of this will come off of here with rotor and uh, caliber housing. And the reason why I'm taking the caliber and the rotor off is because I'm going to be taking these two bolts off the strut and leave leaning the wheel bearing forward to uh, take the half shaft out. Chances are you really don't have to do this. It's just I was going to make the weight of the whole wheel bearing lighter on the ball joint when I undo everything. Okay, I might have to apologize. Uh, some of the how-to I was doing on this ends up being not a how-to. And then I was trying to work in different camera angles to try and get good uh, video of me doing this. And uh, 
I had to go ahead and just uh, get in and do it uh, so I could save time. This is now day two on this job. What I ended up having to do is after I loosened this uh, ball joint a little bit, I didn't break it loose, but I just loosened it up enough. I had to take these two bolts off here that attaches the um, the wheel bearings in this wheel bearing hub to the strut. I had to take these off so this could then lean forward allow me to take the CV joint axle out. In the process of doing this the tie rod end was already looking bad but it was so rusted at the bottom I had to cut the old tie rod off with permission of the owner because this was already uh, pretty bad anyway so ended up replacing a tie rod in and to do that there's a nut right here and these are two different pieces even though it looks like one there's a nut and then there's a tie rod in when they bun up together they look like one but you keep the tie rod in in here and you put a wrench on this part here and you break it loose so it breaks away from this and then you could count how many times you do complete turns on this to back it out of there and then you could use that same amount of turns back on normally you would put a new nut on here but this nut is so rusted to it it might as well be welded I was not able to replace this nut which also marked where this goes back this is the same size uh, tie rod in now it is a good idea when you change your tie rod ends to go get an alignment done but most places nowadays unless you have new tires part new tie rod ends on both sides and different stuff they may not do an alignment anymore so but if you can have an alignment done it is best advised once you replace your tie rod ends to try and have an alignment done on your vehicle but basically this tie rod had to come off these two bolts had to come off this pulled forward allowed me to pull this backwards and then get up behind here with a crowbar or any kind of pry bar work and just pull this forward now sometimes there's a pin back there sometimes there's another tool you may need to get these out but on this particular model you just go reach bit back behind here with a pry bar and you keep working it sometimes you could turn the wheel on the other side to turn this and you could turn it and work at it and eventually it will just pull straight out there's no pin in this one or nothing holding it you just keep prying on it and eventually this will come straight out you could put the other one in just line up the teeth and then put this through here to reline it up in the wheel bearing there's grooves in there and then it's going to take a lot of work to kind of uh you'll have to push down on this control arm to line these back up this is something i wish i could have got on video but uh i needed to hurry up and get this done so uh, my sister-in-law could get her van back so but I wanted to at least show you it's done. I put grease in here. You just want to put enough so this boot right here balloons out. I might have put a little bit too much. But uh, once you see this here start ballooning out like this, then you know it's uh, full enough uh, with, with grease. So it's good to get these here with the grease fitting because then you could re-grease them every now and again and uh, these will last a lot longer but I'm gonna go ahead and put the wheel back on and uh, get this back to my sister-in-law